Your name is healing. Your name is life. Lord, we could call anybody's name. We could holler out John or Susie, and only John and Susie would turn around. But Lord, if we holler out your name, if we holler out Jesus, everybody's going to turn around. Why? Because your name is power. And for those of us that believe in the power of your name and your salvation and your ever-present help in time of need, Lord, your name means everything to us. So I thank you that I can be in a room today full of people who love the name of Jesus. So Lord, I pray as we open up your word, you would give us ears to hear what you are saying to us individually in our season, whether low or whether high because Lord we've all seen you bigger we've all seen you better we've seen you stronger we've seen you greater so we totally trust what you're going to say and lead us into today don't let us miss it Lord and it's in Jesus name we pray and this church was loud when they said, Amen. Amen. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Now, you can't get loud enough. <laughs> if you have your Bible, let's go to Psalm 23. Psalm 23. Anybody got your Bible? Amen. We're going to use that thing. It's not just an ornament, right? Anybody got grandma's old big old Bible that used to sit sit on a coffee table? Open that thing up to something. Don't just let it just sit there. Amen. (laughs) Psalm 23. It's amazing. They sing those songs talking about lead on good shepherd and talking about this and that. And it's funny how me and Cody do not talk about anything what I'm preaching on what she's singing because we love to see what the Lord is going to do and it's always amazing (laughs) growing up did did any adult tell you not to talk to strangers yeah well is that why you're not talking to Jesus has he become a stranger to you Mm -mm. listen if you don't talk to Jesus listen he's not a stranger He removes stranger danger, right? (laughs) Listen, he has been with us, whether you know it or not, all the way through our life. And he will be there for us uh, in highs and lows. That's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about some highs and lows. Psalm 23, verse 1. Let's just start right here. The Lord is my what? My shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me into paths of righteousness for whose name's sake? For his name's sake. So we would all agree that there are highs and lows in this life. Amen. There are days just like today in worship. Some of you can come in, you're so excited, your hands are up, you're singing to the top of your lungs, you're praising the Lord, and then some other days, you just, it just ain't in there, and, and it's been a low day, and your hands are in your pocket, and your head's down, you're not singing. There are days like that, and it, it, it don't, don't think there's something crazy or something wrong, there's just highs and lows, and I'm going to prove this to you by the end of the day, and it's all through the Scripture. I mean, it's something how we can take a high day... Right, We're on a high day, and we compare it to our low day, and we shout and rejoice. Thank you, Lord, it's a high day. But what do we do when we're in a low day, and then we look back, well, my best days are behind me. Right? Look at them high days. Now I'm at a low day, and then we get sad, and we wonder, what in the world 
is going on. What's wrong with me? Listen, just because you're low today doesn't mean you're going to be low tomorrow. Let, let me just say this. Saying that you're low is really a relative statement. So be careful when you say you're low, okay? Because let me tell you something. You could be low until you see somebody lower. And then you're, you're literally higher in their eyes. Make sense? You know, you could say, you know, I opened up my closet and I cried because I didn't have any shoes that color, that style to wear with this outfit. Okay, well, then another person would say, well, I cried because I didn't have any new shoes at all. And then you have another one say, well, I cried because I didn't have no shoes. And then you, then you say, well, uh, uh, I was crying when I had no shoes till I saw somebody that didn't have any feet or any need for any shoes. So you see, which one was low on that pole? See, the first one thought they were low. They were real high compared to the one with no feet. Does that make sense? It just, it's a relative statement. It just depends on where we are in life and what that day holds. And I kind of want to kind of want to curtail off of what I was talking about last week about, about this year coming up and the, tr- and the stuff that we talked about, the trials and different things. This year, I can promise you, there's going to be, and it probably already has, some highs and lows. But let me tell you something. In both of those days, we have a Savior and a shepherd for both of those kind of days. And he's the same. Lead on, good shepherd. Lead on, Lord Jesus. Right? Listen to this promise. This is a good refrigerator verse. Romans 8, 39. It said, there is no height, there's no high, and there's no low that can separate you from the love of Jesus. There's, there, you, listen, whether you high day and think you don't need Jesus or were you in a low day and you wonder where Jesus is, listen, he's both Lord and Savior of all of those days. Right. We just read it right there. Our journey is going to have green pastures. It's, we're going to be right beside still waters, yeah. right? We're going to be going through valleys, Valleys with shadows that we don't think we're even going to get through. We're going to be in places, and really all of those places can be in the presence of enemies. Okay? But every single bit of that, our shepherd and our comforter is right there with us. And that's what brings us peace. Look at it in verse 5. He says that, that our shepherd will actually prepare a table amongst our enemies, in the presence of our enemies. It's amazing how he can, he can go and, and, and get a sheep out of the thicket, out of the briars, get, put, put, put that staff in there and pull that, 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 that little sheep out and pick all the burrs and pick all the things, put all on his cuts and then, and then have a, a little cloth to put some feed down and right there while the wolves are circling. But our shepherd's there and them wolves ain't coming anywhere near. Then he says, surely, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. This is just a beautiful reminder of, hey, I'm going to be in still waters, besides still waters, and taking a bath in some still. I will be in green pastures. But listen, I'll be going through some valleys too. But the shepherd's there the whole time. Go to Isaiah 61 right quick. I want to set this foundation, and, and, uh, and then we're going to go look at Jesus. But, I, uh, but before you walk out of here today, I'm telling you, you're going to learn the truth of these highs and lows. Now, Isaiah 61. Do you, do you remember when Jesus stood up in the gospel, and he grabbed the, the place in Isaiah, and he started reading it? And it was telling who he was. Well, this is what he was reading. Okay? What you're about to read is who Jesus is. Okay? And it's just, it's just a prophecy before he even ste- stepped on the scene in his body. Right? Isaiah 61, starting in verse 1, he says, The Spirit of the Lord God is up on me. Up on. He says, Because the Lord has anointed me. Okay, this is what Jesus came to do. He's anointed to do this right here, to preach the good news. 
the good tidings. Listen, you, that message that he has is the absolute best news ever. That God would step out of heaven and give his life a ransom for many. That's me and you. He paid our sin debt. Best news ever. You can hear that they're giving away a three-piece and they give you an extra piece. Right? Grilled or fried. That's good news. I would be in line for that. Okay? <laughs> right? But listen, of any, any, any of the best news you've ever heard, it doesn't compare to this. This is why Jesus came. He says to preach the good news, the good tidings to the poor. He has sent me, sent Jesus to heal the brokenhearted. Have you ever had your broken heart healed by Jesus? It says he came to proclaim freedom and liberty that those have been chained up and in captivity to something. Whether it's worry, fear, whether it's past, whether it's just anxiety, whether it's addiction, whatever it is, he is the way to break those chains. He says, I come to open the prison doors and let you free. And he says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. He's talking about salvation. He says he's the one that brings vengeance. It's not our job. But look at verse 3. Well, continue. He says to comfort all who mourn. Verse 3 says to console, to counsel you who mourn. Watch this. To give you beauty for ashes. Listen at that exchange. To give you the all of joy for your mourning. The garment of praise for your heaviness. So we could be a tree called righteousness, that we would be planted by the Lord. This, this goes from last week. We are God's seed. He wants to plant us and that fruit be righteousness. Amen. That harvest be righteousness. Listen to it. It is such a beautiful text to read right there. Best news ever. He's our comforter when we're mourning in our lows. So listen, in the same context that he tells you he came to preach good news, he comes to tell you that he comforts those who mourn. Don't miss that. Just because you believe and you receive the good news does not mean there's not going to be days of mourning and days of low. Listen at that, okay? The same Savior is there for both. It doesn't matter if you're a believer or, or, or not. It, listen, that does not take you out of trouble, and it does not take you out of lows. The, it says the rain falls on the just and the unjust. The good news doesn't remove us from low days. The good news shows us that we have a comforter and a shepherd, and a savior for those days. That's what's beautiful. I mean, t tell the truth. We can. Ha have you ever been on high? Maybe, maybe in the first thing in the morning, you're on such a high telling people about Jesus, but by the end of the day, you're like, oh, oh, you're in a low. Wait a minute. Okay, how did that happen? You're on a high. Well, listen, life, life can get you down. But the beautiful part about it, he's no more less Savior than he was at the first of the day than he is at the end of the day. That's why he's called a comforter. Every time you get in your bed and you pull that comforter up over you, think of Jesus. Amen? <laughs> and you know, I've, I've, I've sat with believers before when, when they're talking about mourning somebody they have lost. And they literally feel bad that they're crying because they lost mama. And they would say, they say, I shouldn't be, I should be stronger for the family. Come on. J j hey, I know mama's in heaven, but, but I need to be strong for the family. Listen, it, it, yeah, mama's in heaven, but you're still going to miss her. You're still going to mourn. You're still going to cry. There's a time for that. Read Ecclesiastes. I'm trying to get, here's what I'm trying to tell you. Don't let your low days take you out. He's the same Savior for those. He says he's our ever-present help in time of what? Yes. Trouble, help, lows, whatever it is. He's, our, he's the same Savior. Same Savior. You think about it. Jesus wept at the tomb of Lazarus, right? 
knowing he's about to get him up out of the grave. Why, why, he was weeping because of the atmosphere. It was sad, even though he was about to call him to get up. Listen, low days does not mean you don't believe. Doesn't mean you've lost your faith. But here's, here's the key. Here's where I'm going with you. Because the next time I see you, what's wrong? I'm on a low day. You said it was okay. You said it was okay. You said the low day. And then I see you next week. Where are you? Oh, uh, uh, well, you on low. Are you still on your low day? I was still on my low day. You hadn't cycled through a good day? No. You said it was okay. <laughs> No, I said you got a savior and a comforter in your low day. He said you don't stay there. He said you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He didn't say you go to, put down roots, and stay there. Come on, somebody. Okay, because I don't want you to come misquote me. Okay, Brother Scott said, you can stay in the low. You stay in the low. It's good. I'm in the low. Praise the Lord. I'm in the low. No. You go, his word said you go through. You, yeah, you can come up to it. But he's calling you through it. Isn't that what he's saying? He leads us through the valley of the shadow of death. Isaiah 61.3. Let's look at this again. He gives beauty for ashes. And he gives joy for what? Morning. Morning. Okay, what does that mean? Okay, Jesus want to help you change your clothes. Because, uh-huh. okay, think about that. He said, he said what did he say? How did he say it? He says, he says I'm going to give you a garment in that clothes. A garment of praise for your spirit of heaviness. Does anybody remember what I said last week about heaviness? We're not created to carry the heaviness. That's why he says, come to me, all who are weary and are heavy laden. He says, I, I, Jesus will give you rest. He's a burden remover. He's a burden taker. He's already put it on his back and, 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 his own, and, and crucified at the cross. We're, so when you're down, ah, what's going on? You know, like, what, you down in your back? No, it's just I feel heavy today. Well, what are you, you're trying to carry every burden in your family around. You're trying to carry the burdens of the past around. You're trying to carry your addiction around. You're trying to carry what's going on at work around. And you're about to fall over. You are not created to carry that mess. He says, come to me. How, again, how much trash would be at your house if you didn't wheel that thing out to the end of the road? I'm telling you. That's what, you, we're not created to carry it. So, yes, Jesus is saying, hey, I want to help you change your clothes. I want to exchange the heavy for a garment of, come on somebody, praise. praise. You go from here, oh, to thank you, Jesus. I always picture the dressing room. Some of the stores still got the dressing rooms. You know, you ever go in there? You ever go in the dressing room? Some of the guys, we feel too tough to go in the dressing room. We'll get it off the rack. Yeah, it'll fit. Right? <laughs> and, and our wife is saying, come on, honey, just go try it on. No, I don't, I don't do all that. You know? And, but I love when, like, Cody, Cody's not a shopper at all. Like, I'll get her, and, 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 and it's like, I'll make her go, baby, let me get you a shirt or some britches or something. And, and she's like, oh, okay. You know, whatever. Like, she, she don't, I ain't got to worry about her coming home with even big bags and stuff. I mean, we can't do it anyway. We're broke. But anyway, <laughs> but I love, I love when she's in there because she's vulnerable. And then I hate going in there because I don't like, is this a women's? Is this a I never know what I'm supposed to be doing in there. That's why I just stand out like this, you know. But, but what I'll do, I'll bring her something skimpy or something and lay over the thing. Try that on, you know. <laughs> Try this on. The other day I was somewhere I found a cheetah suit. I said, oh, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding, y'all. <laughs> But you think about that. If, you, if, if, you're, if you're in there and you trust in Jesus to go get something off the rack and bring to you, do you know what he's going to bring you? A garment of praise. And don't tell him. Don't, you know how we do? It ain't going to fit. No. It's one size fit all. 
A garment of praise is one size fit all, not most, all. Because listen, praise looks good on you. Praise looks good on you. Do you know anybody that prays, true praise, does not look good on? Philippians 3. Let's go there right quick. Go to the New Testament, Philippians 3. Next time you get in the dressing room, think about all that. And if you find you a cheetah suit, go give that to your wife. Tell her to put it on. Anyway. She can come out and go, wow. Okay. <laughs> She, she, they made her dress up at work as a, uh, as a deer. She texted me one day, you think you can find me some horns? And I went, what, for what? <laughs> I was like, she's like, I got to dress up as a deer or a something, reindeer, yeah. You know, and I was like, ho, oh, ho, look at him. You know, I just wanted her to be a doe. <laughs> she's over there going, hush. Get off of that. <laughs> uh, remember, we, we, we married. Okay. All right, Philippians 3. Is that where I told y'all to go? Listen to me. Get back to this. Okay, whatever our day brings, don't forget what foundation we live on. Okay? Listen, the, the gospel, the good news made it possible for our, us not to keep falling. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, we just sang about it. Oh my goodness, we just sang about it. He's that solid foundation. Yes, so you wonder if you say, well, Lord, if I fall, am I going to keep falling? No, he's not going to let you, right. right? He won't. Isn't that what we're just saying? Yes. He won't. Okay, you're going to hit bottom. Now, some of us need to hit bottom because yes. we'll finally wake up. It's amazing, and I just thought about this, but wood ducks, wood ducks. God has made wood ducks. They're, they're beautiful. And they usually have bird boxes or they, they make a hole in a, in a tree or something. But they're, they're made to where when it comes time for them to fly, mama will push them out of the nest, and whatever they hit, whether it's ground or the water, whatever, the water still hurts when you belly flop, okay? Okay. When they hit, whatever God has put in them, that hit makes them fly. I want you to think about that. If you got somebody in your life right now and, 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 and they're not flying, it's because they hadn't hit yet. You think about it. If we was, if we was to go out there and see a wood duck nest, oh, well, I don't want them falling out. Okay, and you put pillars under it, you just handicap that duck. Because if it falls out and it don't hit hard, it's never going to fly. Does that make any sense to anybody? <laughs> Philippians, 10, uh, Philippians 3 verse 10 says this. Paul, listen, you think about it. Listen to his heart. He says, I, I, he says my prayer is what? He says, I want to I wanna, I wanna know him. Yes. I want to know Jesus. Listen to his heart. Is that, do you share that same heart? He says, I want to know him. And I want to know the power of his resurrection. And we will one day. Amen? Yeah. But, this is, this is, but this is Paul's heart. heart. He says, I want to know him. I want to know his pow the power of his resurrection. He says, and the fellowship of his sufferings. Mm -hmm. Listen at that. I, 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 he says, I want to be, I want to know. I want to, I want to know the fellowship of his, his suffering. Listen to, listen to me. There ain't a whole lot of them outside of Jesus that suffered like Paul did either. I mean, there's, there's several times in Acts he thinks he's dead. They stoned him, stoned him, and they even thought he was dead. Well, somehow he pulls through. God ain't done with him. He comes up out of there and says, good Lord. You know, you remember that time he thought he said he was in heaven? It's probably because he died for a little while. You know? <laughs> Listen, so he knows how to, what's suffering. He's been shipwrecked. Right? He'd been bit by a snake after the shipwreck. Remember, he's been through some things. So, so he's saying that, that he's knowing this fellowship through the suffering. And I want to take you there just for a minute because we got to understand this. When we read stuff like this, do we really know what we're reading? Okay? Because, listen, it's not this. Let me tell you what it's not. It doesn't mean that Jesus put suffering on us because he went through things. And I want you to feel my pain. 
Okay, there are some people in Scripture that I truly believe he, he has let get a taste of what God goes through. I truly believe it. I mean, you, you think about Abraham, and he asked Abraham to kill his son Isaac. Well, that he, he was about to kill him. He was coming down with a knife, and then the angel said, No, don't go any further. I see you have faith. Well, what was he doing? He had to go through the turmoil about, about to him about to kill his son. Well, can you imagine God actually did kill his son? Okay, think about Hosea. When he told Hosea, I want, Hosea, I want you to go marry a prostitute. I want you to go marry a prostitute. Wait, what? Okay, yeah, he goes and marries her, marries her and she keeps cheating on him. Okay, and I think, he, I think in my, my spirit he says he looks at man and he looks at Hosea and says, now you know how I feel because my people cheat on me all the time. So there's, there's, yes, there's, there's th- that things that, that God can share with man about, about, about sufferings. But don't you listen to me in this. Take the word fellowship, okay, and suffering. We know what suffering is. Let's just say our low days, okay. That word fellowship comes from the Greek word kononia, okay. It's one of those few Greek words I can say. <laughs> and that means literally to, to, to ta- give or take. It's, it's kind of like, hey, we have this in common. Uh, it's, it's a give and take, kind of a relational uh, fellowship, com- a common union, right? That's where we get the word communion from, all right? It's, 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 it's like when we used to have the old potlucks, right? What was that? That was a fellowship. What were we doing? Some folks would, would cook stuff at their house and bring it to church, Others would cook stuff there or go pick it up, bring it up, and then y'all could talk about how you fixed everything, right? But I'm telling you, you got to be careful with them potlucks because you'll have five people do chili or, or soup or whatever, and then no, nobody else did anything like that or, or you know, whatever. And then, 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 you got, <laughs> then you got all five of them say, did you try mine? Did you try mine? Did you try mine? Like, okay, we got five or six different chilies or soups here. It's hard to try them all. Right? And then if you don't try them all, then somebody's going to get mad. <laughs> but I'm telling you, I got leery on the potlucks, man. Because once you start finding toenails and stuff, mm-hmm. <laughs> think of a line. I don't understand how somebody can have some fudge and clip toenails in the fudge. Anyway. <laughs> But you think about what we're doing before the toenails. We're eating good food and we're visiting. You don't know how clean. Anyway, you're visiting, you're talking, you, 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 you got things in common. It's a fellowship, right? Yeah. Does that make sense? So to fellowship with his sufferings. Because, see, we can relate to one another's life. Okay? Here's what Jesus means with the fellowship of his sufferings. That means when we're going through low days and we think we're going through things that there's no way anybody can understand what we're going through, Jesus does. Jesus does. Jesus understands what we're going through. And then he can relate. Remember he says that in Hebrews 4. He says, hey, I know what you're going through. I can sympathize. I can empathize with your weaknesses. Because listen, I've been there. I've been through things. Things that are so much worse. But when you go through things, listen, remember what he said? He says, I'm close to the brokenhearted. So I want you to remember that. On your low days, when you're going through these low days, he says, I'm close to you. Because I feel I'm, 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 I'm close to the brokenhearted. He has been there. Amen? Now, that's what I want to do for the rest of the time. Let's go to Luke chapter 2. I want to give you some examples that Jesus had highs and lows, okay? Because, again, I don't want you to feel like, you know, you're going to give up because you're having a low day. Listen, Jesus had low days, but we go through the low days, not to the low days, okay? Now, he had highs and lows. I'm going to show you. Listen, Luke 2, let's just start in verse 43. Here's the high. It ain't going to seem like a high, but I'm going to show you the high when I compare it to the other spot. Y'all still good? Okay. Verse 43, Luke chapter 2. So you got to remember, this is Jesus when he was young, probably 12 years old. And 
mom and daddy's in town for the feast, Passover, all that stuff, and it's time for them to leave, and they're, they're about to head out. Lots and lots of people around, okay? So it says when they'd finished the days of the feast and, and all, they returned. The boy, Jesus, lingered behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother didn't know it. Now, parents, <laughs> think about that. But supposing him to have been in the company, like they probably traveled a bunch of them, right? Yeah. They went a day's journey <laughs> and sought him among their relatives in the Kauai. So one day they're walking around. Have you seen Jesus? Have you seen Jesus? Have you seen Jesus? Have you seen Jesus? I mean, can you imagine losing the Son of God? <laughs> God, God told Mary, he says, hey, I'm, I'm, I, you're going to have the Savior. I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to put Jesus in you, right? He told Joseph, hey, you, you, you're going to have to raise this boy. Okay, I would think if God put a calling in your life, that would be the most important thing that we would ever face. Okay, well, God, Lord, can you help us find your son? <laughs> right? Right? Okay. So they didn't find him, so they went back to Jerusalem where they last seen him. <laughs> Where did they find him? It says three days later they found him up in the church house. Found him in the temple in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. Can you imagine a 12-year-old boy? All who heard Jesus were astonished at his understanding and his answers. Don't you know them, the, the older guys in there going just, boy. And then they said, oh, man, who is this guy, you know? So he's, they're, they're, he's astonishing them. Uh, verse 48. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought... You know, he's, he just, he's talking about, Me and your daddy have been looking for you, right? Yeah. And watch his response. He said to them, Why do you look for me? Why do you seek me? Watch this. Talking about my father. Okay? He said... Now, if you notice in verse 48, it's a lowercase f... In, a, in verse 49, it's a capital F. Two different daddies. Okay? He's talking about his earth daddy, Joseph. He said, that ain't, that, ain't, that ain't my real daddy. My real daddy is God. So that's why he said this. He said, did you not know that I must be about my father's business? I mean, the boy, it, Jesus is getting old enough where he's starting to walk in his calling and in his purpose. And you can start seeing the residue of the amazement of who he was right. in the church house. Yeah. So all the, 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 the big dogs in there are going, wow, who is this kid? Well, you're starting to see who Jesus actually is. So the high here, and what I'm saying is this, all throughout Jesus' life, we see the scripture where he says, not my will, but daddy, your will be done. Yeah. Right? Okay, so here is the, really the first time you see him speak, and he says, I'm about my father's business. I'm created for my... He, well, you ain't created. He, he came to this earth for his daddy's business. He left heaven to come for, to do his daddy's business. So that is a high, because he's in there amazing people, and he's on a high right there. Now, Matthew 26. Let's look at the low. All through Jesus' life, he was about his father's business, about his father's will, right? And, 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 and he's, he's talking about his purpose, what he was called to do. Now, pick it up in verse 36. So fast forward to the Garden of Gethsemane. What are we talking about? Highs and lows? Okay, you tell me if this ain't a low. You got to you got to remember Jesus is fully God, but fully man when he was on this earth. So he still had all the temptation, all the emotion that we do today. Okay, put yourself in that spot. So Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, he even brought his friends with him. He says, "Guys, can you sit here while I go and pray over there?" It says he took with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee, and he began to, watch this, be sorrowful and deeply, what? 
distress. Does it sound like a low? Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He fell on his face and prayed. He said, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but you will. Whatever you want done. You want to talk about a low. Jesus has just come to the point of his life of really what he came here to do. He knows that he's about to be arrested, that he's going to be flogged, beaten, he's going to be tied to a whipping post, beat beyond human resemblance. That's what the scripture says. And it says that he's going to be beaten so bad he can count his bones. He's going to bleed every drop of blood out of, him, out of his body. He knows that's what's... Okay, if you knew that was going to happen this evening, how would you feel? Very low. Even though in the back of his mind, he's like, this is going to save everybody if they'll look to me. This one act is salvation for the world. So that part would bring him joy. That's, you, you think the cross is where, where joy and sorrow met. The Bible says righteousness and peace kiss at the cross. Okay, you talk about a low. Think about how he's feeling. This is where the scripture talks about he sweat drops of blood. I'm about my father's business. I'm walking in my calling. I'm walking in purpose one day. The next day you're sweating drops of blood. You're deeply sorrowed. Now, who are we talking about here? Jesus. If Jesus faced days like this, we will too. Is that making any sense to anybody? So, the, the highs, lows. Highs, lows. Highs, lows. He, listen, notice he said, I need my friends. That's why he brought his friends. He's like, would you guys please pray for me? You'll see that a lot in the scripture where Jesus says, well, y'all pray for me. He's usually one doing the praying. He said, would y'all pray for me? Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. There are going to be days that you're called to walk in the purpose of being mama, daddy, right? There's going to be days that you're called to walk in leader at work. Whatever you do, you're going to be called to walk in a friend. Whatever it is, you fill in your purpose. There are going to be days that you're, you're called to walk in that purpose, but then you're going to be tested to the max in that purpose. You're going to be tested to the max. Yes, we're going to be like Jesus. We're going to need help. We're going to need friends to start praying. Please, please pray for me, right? We're try, we're, 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 I'm walking in purpose I'm struggling as a daddy right now because I don't know what to do with this knothead. You, you could be saying it. Mama, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Listen, but I know I'm not going to give up, but would you please pray for me? Jesus understands that battle. Why? Because he walked in purpose even when his purpose hurt where he sweat drops of blood. I hope you're hearing what I'm saying. He, here's the whole thing, the whole reason I'm saying this is next time you're at that point, he understands. He really, truly understands. And I promise you, our pain cannot even come close to what he walked in. So when he says, I'm about my father's business, some of those days were really high, but some of them were really low. But isn't it something how his really low is the highest thing that we could possibly speak of? Our salvation. He got low so we could be on high. Matthew 16, 24 tells us to take up our cross. You ever said that? Take up, my, take up my cross. Take up your cross and follow him. What does that mean? It means when you're walking in your calling, there are days that you just don't want to do it anymore. But for the greater good of the situation, you just press on. Why? Because Jesus, there's a, greater, there's a greater thing going on here. And Jesus set the example. We got to press on. Pick up your cross 
Don't sit and have a pity party. I'm going to say, I'm going to still do what God's called me to do. No matter what, I'm going to press on. I'm going to do it without an attitude. I'm going to do it without complaining. I'm going to do it without losing it. I don't want to be here today. I don't want to be doing this today. I don't want to be daddy today. I don't want to be mama today. I don't want to be me, me, or pee, pee, whatever you're called today. <laughs> right? <laughs> Probably not pee, pee. <laughs> But what do you do? And you press on. Okay, so, so what I'm telling you, this, you, you, we say, well, I'm at a breaking point. Anybody ever said that? I'm at a breaking point. Listen, this is how we deal with breaking points. Suck it up for the greater good of the situation. Hello. And we got to recognize those days, what you could call cross days. But man, our cross days cannot even compare to what Jesus went through. I want you, I want you to listen. He, he says sometimes we have to bear our cross. That's what it means. Okay? It means to, to even when we don't feel like it, press on because Jesus did. I want you to think, if, if, when I say this to you, I want you to think about what it would mean. It, 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 when, 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 when Daddy God said to Jesus, son, you're going to have to bear your cro- bear a cross, bear your cross. What, what do you think that meant to him? Again, that's why he's sweating drops of blood. That's why he's needing people to pray for him. That's why he's on his knees and he's crying out to his dad three different times. The Lord, if there's any way, I don't want to go through this. Highs and lows. Go to John 12 right quick. John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John 12. Let me show you another one. Is this, is this coming together? Is this making sense? Listen, if it was light and right, it'd be easy, wouldn't it? Who knows life is inconsistent? Uh-huh. We got people we know that smile all the time. And then when we see them frown, what do we do? We think we did something. Tell the truth. We take it personal and say, well... I must have done something wrong. And then you start frowning. You start looking at people cross-eyed. And then they wonder, what did I do wrong? Listen, I'm trying to say, one person's frown can turn all these other people's lives. Y'all rhyming, man. (laughs) Uh, yeah, Yeah. Uh, you, I'm serious. It's like a domino effect. Yeah. Okay. One person smiles all the time. What's wrong with him? I must have done something. And then you're in a bad mood. Well, this friend that you're friend with, what's wrong with him? Oh, I must have done something. No. People can have low days. When you see somebody that smiles all the time frowning, and they won't want to talk about it, pray for them. Pray for them. They're having to process what made them frown. Pray for them. Jesus can relate to this. You ready? John chapter 12, verse 12. Jesus is coming into Jerusalem. The people in verse 13 took palm branches, laid them out in the street, and hollered out, Hosanna to Jesus. Hosanna. Think about it. Laying palm. We, we wouldn't have no palm branches around here. I guess it would be like pine tree limbs, right? <laughs> what were you saying? Jesus, save us. That's what they're saying. Hosanna. Jesus, sa- Jesus is riding into town. Save us. Save us. Save us, Jesus. Four days later, John 19. Four days. John 19, verse 15. Four days. Jesus, we love you. Save us. Thank you, Lord. I praise your name. Four days later, what do you think they're saying? Mm Mm-hmm. Look at verse 15. They cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. What? What? Okay. 
four days ago, he was on a high. Now, you got to remember, Jesus knows what's going to go down. First of all, they're telling him to save them for the whole other reason, and they're not talking about salvation. Okay, they're talking about, please get us out away from these Romans. That's what they're saying. But when he didn't come in and be a king like they thought he should be, <laughs> I'm glad he didn't, okay? He, he came in on a donkey, and then later they says, he can't do nothing for us, crucify him. So what I'm saying is, you got somebody in your life that's singing your praises, that's always encouraging you, and you're on a high when you're around them. What are you going to do when they're not for you one day? Listen, just because they're not for you today doesn't mean they're not going to be for you tomorrow. We go through lows. We go through bad days. I mean, listen, it's hard for somebody to grit their teeth and build you up when they're going through something. Did you hear that? Give them the benefit of the doubt. If they're going through something and they're not always singing their, your praises like they usually do, and they're gritting their trees, and they're, listen, it's, it's hard to do that when you're going through stuff yourself, even though Jesus did do that. He's the only one. He grit his teeth, and he did it. I can't even imagine. So let's just say it like this. There are some environments we walk in and we're just the thermometer. What does that mean? Okay, if you, if you take a thermometer in an environment, it'll tell you the temperature. Okay? But what if you, when you find out what the temperature is, you want to be the thermostat? Because you don't like the temperature in the room. But how about when you can't be the thermostat? There's a lot of rooms we walk into. Yeah, we can see. Mm, and we can't do anything about it. But that's the thing about Jesus. Listen to me. He's called the comforter. What, what, is, what that, that thing on the outside of your house that got the fan in it and spins around is your AC unit. Mm -hmm. And on the inside somewhere you got a blower and all that good stuff and where your filter is. Okay, listen, there's Freon out there that turns into cold air or there's a heat pump in it that turns into heat that makes you comfortable inside your house. Does that make sense? Y'all knew this, didn't you? Yeah. Okay, so all you got to do is walk to the thermostat on the wall, right? And say, hmm, I want it a little warmer in here, which you're going to need to do that later when you get home, Right? Or I need it, unless, ladies, you're having hot flash. I need it to be cool in here, right? You can change the temperature. Let me tell you something. In life, it's going to get hot. It's going to get cold. You're going to have highs and lows, and there's only one that can change the temperature in the thermostat. That is Jesus. That's why he's called the comforter. You ever notice, like, most of these AC places, they got comfort somewhere in their, in their name? Yeah. We have comfort in an uncomfortable situation. I'm going to close with this one right here. Let's go to Matthew 3. I'll show you one more. Matthew 3. Hey, Jesus can relate. Highs and lows, hills and valleys. Somebody sing that song right quick. Hills and valleys. I wish I could sing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, I appreciate that. Because, see, there's days that people will encourage you, and there's days that people will bring you down. <laughs> what are you going to do? Me and Robert still good friends. <laughs> Case in point, huh? <laughs> I was about to say, folks are wishy-washy. <laughs> folks are wishy-washy. <laughs> Anybody know folks are wishy-washy? If you say folks are wishy-washy, then so are you, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> you're a folk, right? 
Okay, tell me this right quick. Okay, listen. This is verse 16. All right, John the Baptist. Okay, John the Baptist was the man who come up out the woods wearing camel hair and eating honey and locusts. He was, he was, he was the Bible version of a redneck. He was called <laughs> to be the front runner of Jesus. He came out, he's telling people about Jesus even though, even though Jesus hadn't showed up yet. Well, when Jesus does show up, then Jesus asked John the Baptist if he would baptize him. Okay? Watch this. Here's, that. Here's the baptism of Jesus. Verse 16. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up out of the water. Now, Kathleen's getting baptized today. And, yeah. And, and, and when you come up out the water, if we hear this, this would be amazing. <laughs> Listen. Came up out of the water. And behold, the heavens opened, and he, Jesus, saw the Spirit of God come down like a dove, lit up on him, right? Yeah. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in who I am well pleased. Yeah. Could you imagine if you're John? Okay, Jesus, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit... This is my son, who I'm very well pleased. What you say? <laughs> like, as John, okay, where would your faith be right there? <laughs> Whoa! I baptize the son of God. Woo! I baptize the son of God. Yeah! Right? <laughs> Go to Luke 7. <laughs> Luke 7. <laughs> Watch this. John's on fire, right? He heard God and everybody there say, This is my son, Jesus, and who I am well pleased. Then, then, he, then he's seen Jesus do all this stuff, right? Well, wait a minute. What was one of the things that Jesus said he came to do? Set the captive free? And it was it let prisoners out of prison? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so John knows all this, right? Well, now John's in prison for preaching Jesus. Verse 19. John calls in his disciples and sends them to Jesus. And he says, when you get to Jesus, ask Jesus if he's the, if he's the one that's the coming one or do, are we supposed to look for somebody else? Come back. This, Jesus, God is saying, My son, who I am well pleased. Ask Jesus if he's the one, or should I look for somebody else? What's happened? Watch it, watch it. What's happened? So when the men had come to him and said, John the Baptist sent us and asked if you were the one, <laughs> that very hour, Jesus cured many infirmities, afflictions, called out evil spirits. He gave blind men sight. <laughs> so he says, why don't you go tell John <laughs> the things that you've seen and heard? The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead people are raised, the poor have the gospel preached to them. Oh, by the way, tell him this, blessed is he who's not offended because of me. Oh, got him. <laughs> Circumstances had changed John's mind. Folks are wishy-washy. <laughs> so what I'm saying is Jesus can relate. Because what's going on? John the Baptist has been preaching Jesus. He's been arrested. And he expects Jesus to get him out of prison. Well, guess what? That's not his path now. He, you're there for a reason. Whatever we go through, and whatever we're, it, it, we're there for a reason, right? But he expects... Jesus to get him out of prison. And because Jesus doesn't get him out of prison now, his, 
his, what, he, who, what he thinks of Jesus has become stained. Did Jesus do anything wrong? No. Listen, expectations is the root, is the root of offense. If you're offended at somebody right now, it's probably because you expected something they did or didn't do. You expect them not to or to do. And that right there, my friend, is what you're setting yourself up to be offended. Limit your expectations. And then you, people won't be as wishy-washy. Okay? So what I'm telling you right now in your life, if you're offended at somebody right now, if, if you can't forgive them, you've been through something with them, and you just don't know how to handle the situation, Jesus can relate to you. How, do you, how brother? Well, John the Baptist. And listen, that ain't the only one, I'm telling you. The scripture is full of it. So when you say people are wishy-washy, yes, he knows. Jesus can relate to the highs and to the lows. That's my whole message right there. He can relate. And I, and I got to tell you, I mean, I'm telling you, I know this is what God wanted, wanted us to hear today. Because, I mean, just, just this morning, Chris Childers sitting right here sent me this. <laughs> Listen, I mean, seriously. So this is, this is a, 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 a devotional called Behind and Ahead. <laughs> sometimes you're behind, sometimes you're ahead, right? Sometimes you're high, sometimes you're low. And guess what the, the scripture was for this? Uh, <laughs> Psalm 23, 3. The one we just led. He guides us along the path, right? Okay. So he's talking about standing in Africa where it's normally calm and beautiful at this certain spot. Looking out at the ocean, it's just calm. Well, this particular day, the, it's a raging ocean. I mean, it's like, it's a scary type, type of day. He said it would even be brave if you had to be out there in this. And he couldn't imagine the mariners that are out there on the water on this day. He said it was just crazy. But he says, I liken it to my situation in Jesus. At times it's calm. At times the storm is tossing. He says, I have walked bravely through this path that God leads me, whether it's, whether it's calm or whether it's, it's turmoil, right? Amen. He says, I can hear the voice of calming waters biding him in faith, knowing that behind him is a solid ground of forgiveness, power, and love. And ahead of him is an unseen, awesome eternity with Jesus. <laughs> that man sent that to me this morning. I said, hey, you know what I was preaching on? <laughs> Highs and lows. Highs and lows. He can relate. Some days you're going to look out, it's going to be calm. And it's going to be so nice. You can sit out there and just enjoy. But then there's other days, the temperature is going to change. And that wind's going to be blowing. And those seas are going to be crazy. But our Savior is the same. Our Comforter is the same. We know that there's forgiveness and a solid foundation behind us. And we know that He's going to be with us in the highs and lows moving forward. What a beautiful promise. That's why I want, I want, to, I want, to, I want to end on this. We'll just put it on the screen. One of my favorite verses. Isaiah 26, verse 3. You'll keep Him... Him being us in what? Perfect peace. Okay, I want to know how to have perfect, perfect peace. Okay, here it is. Contingency plan. Whose mind is stayed on you. Why? Because he trusts you. Oh, man. Tell me how true is that? Because as long as our mind and our thoughts are on Jesus and his word, perfect peace. You could be have, have the worst news, the, 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 the worst, lowest day, and you still got to smile. He does that for you. He really does. But the beautiful about, part of all that is you now know he can relate. 
And when you, when you think you're at your breaking point and you're at the edge, oh, Jesus went so much further. You know what that does? That fellowship and that suffering even grows a stronger bond between you and him. Because then you say, mm, Lord, I'm sorry you had to go through that. Because you went through it for me. You do realize that should have been us. But he took that off of us. Wow. Mm. If you would, bow your heads. So you came in here today either on a low or a high. I pray worship in the word has lifted you up some. I pray this is exactly what you needed. I believe everything that's said from up here and sang from up here has come from a heart that is asking Jesus to speak. Maybe you come in with a low and this word, this word has got down in your soul and it brought you out. But for those right now that are low, still so low, you're not created to carry that around. I can't stress that enough. If you keep carrying it around, it will become toxic. And it's going to bleed over into your other relationships. You've got to hand it over to Jesus. As hard as that may seem. Take those clothes off that are heavy. And let Jesus give you that garment of praise. You are created not for heaviness. You're created to bring God glory. You bring God glory when you learn what you need to learn from the low and from the trial. And you put it into practice. You bring, bring God glory when you walk in purpose and calling. Anything hindering you from your purpose and your calling and bringing God glory is from the enemy. Jesus came to set the captive free. He still does it today. Will you let him do it? Will you, will you, will you hand over your heaviness and, and let him exchange it? There's no cost. Just in the spirit realm right now, picture yourself in the dressing room and Jesus is standing outside. Just, just, just go ahead and say, Jesus, bring me that garment of praise. If you're like me, I always worried if I need to take the clothes I tried on that I'm not going to get and go hang them back up. And, no, they, they get them. Listen, you take your spirit of heaviness off and leave it in there. And I want you to walk out of that dressing room. Walk out of that dressing room with your garment of praise because praise looks so good on you. Jesus looks so good on you. Set free from addiction looks so good on you. Set free from worry and anxiety and fear. All that looks really, really good on you.
Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters today. And I thank you for them being here. God, you know exactly what they need. I pray they would lean into you right now like more than ever. God, I pray our, our highs, our highs would not be days that we forget about you because everything is going good. I pray that our highs would be days that our praise would be even higher. Lord, I pray today you'd set the captive free. Lord, we thank you for how you love us and that you care. And we, and when we feel like everything's against us, you are for us. Lord, I pray you change the temperature in some lives today. That you wrap your arms around us. And be our comforter. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. The church said amen. If you would stand. We're going to take this opportunity to sing another song. You got another opportunity to 